But anyway, who's there during the, the flood? Is it the whole the whole city is being flooded. Uh, even our new friend here, his family has had to move up to the second floor because the water flood water's flooded the first floor. Uh, Pradeep Samuel, does anybody remember Pradeep? Yep. Pradeep was here um, about four or five years ago. Pradeep was, uh, as he describes, a novice Christian. So he would go to church on Sunday and sing songs and look like a Christian, but he really wasn't. And we came here, that's his own words, uh, we were going through a discipleship class and he learned what salvation is and what baptism is and what the Holy Spirit is. And he learned all those things from like the first time and he's really excited and God's just blessing his life. His family, the water came up to the door, but never came into the house. So it's really bad. Wow. So I just want to, can we pray for Chennai today? Is that all right? I mean, so many different things to pray for. You pray for California. You can pray for all the shootings. You pray for your own lives. It's just pray. But something, I don't know about you, but when I pray for other things besides myself, it seems like it's different, isn't it? So I asked my friend, come on up. And uh, he's going to lead us. Tell us your name and where you're from. And, uh, Raja. I moved from the UK to the uh, US for my job, but my native is uh, Chennai. It's in the south part of India. So it's a town. If you see that in the map, it's a big town. So for the last uh, week, I can say the disaster. So most of the year, we, we lost 250 lives. Um, oh, wow.
before I start, there's two stories from Chennai. Sharon um, is, uh, there's a family that's living on the first floor with mom, two, three children, and uh, of course they had, they had no food. So Sharon took uh, some of his money and some of their money to go find bread. So he's, he's weighing into water that's neck deep to get across to the other side of the city or as far as he can get to find a place where he can find some food, which he did, or the bakery that was open. So he bought as much bread as he could. And by the time he was on the way back, the water was up to his nose, so he's tiptoeing. And he had a, it was rushing really fast for a period of time, so it was still raining. And so he had to kind of sitting on a, standing on a curb, waiting for the water to kind of run down the road. And then uh, finally he was able to get across the water and bring food to them. And so that was a very, he's staying in a hotel right now. And then he's on the second floor. Um, and then the, uh, they still have uh, like a maid service uh, there at the hotel, so the ladies come and clean and help, you know, help provide for people. And the one, one of the ladies that was helping them, uh, caring for them, uh, came in to get her paycheck uh, yesterday, and she took her paycheck and gave it, or the money, and gave cash, so the money, and she put $200 more to give it to them so they could buy food for the people that are staying at the hotel. So that's pretty amazing stories. I, my prayer, and last night I was praying with Pradeep on uh, instant message on Facebook, I was praying with him. Um, and because it's day, it's morning there at 2 in the morning, I was up, so I, I was contacting him and uh, finding how things were going. And uh, just believing that God, anyway, I was praying that God would bring uses to bring people to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Every time there's a disaster or something happens, people, why is this happening, God? And we all go through that and individually we deal with it. But as a nation, we did that a while back, and it's a city in Chennai that are doing that now. And so we're going to point them to the God that will care for them, right? And love them. And Christians all over the world, um, even to some of the horrific things that you hear going on in the news, Christians are stepping up, loving on people, caring for them. And it's like, why are you doing this? Because Jesus did it for me. I want to do it for you, right? And so it's an amazing thing that's happening now. So the world is in a mess, right? But Jesus is glorified, amen? When we actually serve and love on people, we see God forgiving and healing and doing all the things that we mentioned this morning. I think God is doing a wonderful thing. Uh, so this this month, let me just uh, transition a little bit uh, to um, my message. Um, we're going to be in John chapter 10, if you want to turn there. And we're going to talk about Jesus as uh, a picture of Jesus. Uh, this month, we're going to be teaching uh, on Jesus and giving different pictures of Jesus, maybe some of these things you already know. Hopefully, if you do, it will reinforce your faith to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. If you haven't heard if you heard this for the very first time, I pray that God would just change your heart and know that He is the Son of God. And then through Him, everything that you need will be provided. Amen? Hallelujah. I really believe that with all my heart. So let's, um, if you will, I'm just going to read the whole chapter 10 because I, I think it will get um, too long. But I'll start in verse 7. And I'm going to read through uh, verse 18. And uh, then I'm, I want to pray. And my prayer today is that we fully, uh, our faith is fully set on Him. Amen? Not on our, you know, I won't get into that anymore. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, let's look at this uh, verse, John chapter 10, verse 7. It says, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate of the sheep. All who uh, ever uh, came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep do not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me uh, will be saved. He will come in and out and find pastors. The thieves come only to steal and to kill and destroy. And I have come that they may have life and have it to its fullest. Verse 11. I am the good shepherd. Everybody say that together. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man uh, runs away because he is hired, he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there 
shall be one flock, and they shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down for my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from the Father. Father, I just pray right now for everyone that's here today. And Lord, to help us understand how great and how wonderful your love is. How wonderful it is that you sent Jesus to provide for us freedom from sin, freedom from guilt, freedom from this world, and give us a life. And that you included in this word, and you included uh, that not only the Jewish people, but every people group in the world can come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Father, I thank you so much for that. Bless your children this morning. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. As we look at, um, as I've been studying out this for this week, I've learned something about the book of John that's maybe new for me or just something that was refreshed in my spirit. But in the book of John, Jesus says, I am, quite a few times. Uh, he says, I am the good shepherd. He says, I am the bread of life. So I go back and I got excited about that. So I said, go back, where is, it? Where is the reference I am? Remember when Moses was supposed to take the children of Israel out of Egypt and take them to the promised land? And Moses was a stutter, and he had seen the burning bush, all those things that happened, right? And all of a sudden, Moses is asking God, and I love this, how God is so intimate with us. He wants to know us. He'll talk to us. He'll, he'll tell us about things. He says, uh, he says, what should I, he asked God, what should I say, or how, sh who should I say sent me? And he says this, I am sent me. He says, I am that I am. That's what you should tell the people. It's like, what? I am that I am. What does that mean, you know? And I was like, well, I looked at that and I researched that a little bit. It says, I am. I'm everything that the Jewish people need to get out of captivity. I am everything that they ever will need in the future. I am. I'm going to provide all that for you. Amen? And Jesus repeats the same thing here in John. Quite, John records it quite a few times. Uh, 14 different times. I am. So let me just go over a couple of them. Verse, in, in John chapter 6 and verse 35 through 40, it says, I am the bread of life. What is that reference to? I am the bread of life. The bread that you need to sustain your life, Jesus provides for you, right? And when the disciples ask Jesus, how should I pray? He says this, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, right? Jesus is the daily bread that you need. What is that? Jesus is the word, right? Won't get into that too much today, but that, he said that. Also he said, I am the light of the world. I love that. He is a light of the world. Where else are you going to turn to for anything but to Jesus? And I like the Psalms 119.05 says this, I am a, uh, Your word is a lamp unto my feet, and the word is what, Rami? The word is Jesus, right? He says, the, Your word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. I tell people, you, take a, you, you, can, you can take a flashlight and shine it down the path, but you're really not going to be able to see what's right in front of you, so you kind of need to have that lamp right in front of you so you can take that next step, right? In faith, trusting God is going to guide you all the way through your life. Come on, that's good stuff, right? Amen? He's going to guide you every step of the way if you just let him. And uh, John 8, 58 says this, uh, Before Abraham, I am. Why was that significant? Because the Jewish people always says, Father Abraham, they based their, their existence from Father Abraham on. Jesus is telling them that I am. Before Father Abraham, I am. You talk to a Muslim person, and he always referenced Abraham. I said, but in this verse, it says Jesus was before Abraham. And you can share with them Jesus, right? Right? Talk to them and share Christ with them. It's uh, verse, uh, John chapter 10, verse 9 says, I am the door. Revelation tells us that Jesus is, Revelation 3.20 says, Jesus stands at the door and knocks. He says, if anybody will what, open the door, he'll come in. Right? Jesus is the door. And, um... Verse uh, chapter 11 and 25 says, I am the resurrection of life. He raised from the dead, right? The only person to do so, so far, the only God that is still living today, and he is the life that we have. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. What do you need? It's in Jesus. Amen? He provides everything for you. 
verse, uh, John 15, 1 says, I am the vine. We know in chapter 15, we preached on it a few weeks ago, right? Jesus is the vine. If we attach ourselves to the vine, then we won't go away and do wrong things, right? If we're not attached to the vine, it says we shrivel up and die, and that, that branch that is shriveled up and die winds up where? In the, in the fire, right? We won't preach that today, but that's true. You have to be attached to Jesus. You have to stay with them and connect yourself with them, and, you're, and through him you have life, amen? But today we're going to concentrate on one thing. We're going to concentrate on I am the Good Shepherd. I want to draw a picture of that and show you who the Good Shepherd is. There's only a few times in Scripture that actually talks about Jesus as a shepherd. Anybody can tell me what's the most famous six verses in the Bible about that? Psalms 23, right? We all know that, right? We'll talk about that in just a minute. But Jesus is the Good, good Shepherd. Here it talks about the shepherd. He says the shepherd will, the sheep will hear my voice. Right? He says, he is the good shepherd. The, he says, I am. We described that a little bit. He says, good. What does good mean? Perfect. Pure. Holy. Nothing bad in Jesus. I am the good. A lot of times it refers to the uh, pastors as a shepherd. But, you know, Jesus is a better shepherd than me, right? He knows everything about you and he knows everything you need. He says, I am the good shepherd. I, I am. And my sheep. And it says, and it distincts, and it's, it's distinctive right here. And it's just two distinctions. It says, I am a sh I, my sheep hear my voice. The Jewish people will hear my voice. Those that believe in me, that believe I'm some guy. And also it says that those other people, and who are those? That's us, right? We're included in that. So we can hear God's voice too. Would you put, play a video, Britain, for a second? Get a video in the middle of the sermon. How's that? Those are sheep. Slow down the water enough for the sheep to be able to walk across. Also, 
they get scared or the, uh, the water is running too fast, they can't even go find food for themselves. So, I mean, it's kind of interesting. They have to take up, they'll eat all the grass in a certain area, and then they won't go to another area or move. They'll just, they'll just, they'll actually starve if they don't, uh, somebody doesn't lead them to a place to eat. The, and the grass could be just, you know, a few feet away. It's kind of interesting. It's, uh, if you do a little bit of study on, 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 on sheep herding. Um, and then Jesus describes himself as a shepherd and then as a sheep. And why did he pick that? I mean, could he pick like a badger or something or some, a lion or we could be lions or something? No, we're, we're, we're just really helpless and we need a savior. Amen. Amen. We're really helpless. I mean, I remember the day I asked Jesus in my heart. I mean, I was hopeless. I recognized my sin. I was hopeless and I just needed something and I heard the voice. And I said, yes, I'm going to follow Jesus. Amen. Let's turn to this 23rd Psalm. Most of us know it. I usually, sometimes I even say it at funerals because it's comforting. But today I want to look at it and um, look at it in the, in the eyes that we are the sheep. And Jesus is our good shepherd. And he's going to provide for us. And I'm going to take a few moments to, to go through this. Maybe a little slower. I always tell people, you need to how many how many know that the pastor would really be happy if everybody read their Bible every day? I would be really happy. Jesus would be really happy. Right? Read your Bible every day. And I think we should read our Bible every day. I was telling our leadership team recently that there's 31 Proverbs. You could read a proverb every morning. So you get out of bed, read a proverb. I mean, I, got, I don't have time for that. I'm mean, rushing, rushing, rushing. We can take there's like 25 to 30 verses. Some are a little bit longer, but, you know, read a proverb every day. There's so much wisdom in that. You could almost, like, live in the proverb. Like, you could just, if you'd apply those things. I remember being a young Christian and um, reading the, where the, it was in Psalms, but a soft answer turns away wrath. And I had one of those really grumpy bosses. You ever have one of those guys that's just, like, grumpy? And they're just, like, anytime they even talk to you, it's like, they're mad at you, but they're not. That's just their mannerism. So one day I said, I read that in the morning and I went to work and I said, oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to, when he yells at me, I'm just going to speak softly, actually more softly than I normally would out of respect because he was a senior rank to me, but I just thought I'd talk more softly to him and humble him because I wanted him to come to know Jesus, right? That's what my purpose was. And when I did that, he's like, looked at me like, what is wrong with you? Like, how come you're not getting mad at me? Like, he tried to edge me on even a little bit more because I was being nice to him. And so then after about an hour later, he had to come back to me and ask me, what, what was that about? I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Well, why did you talk like so softly like that? What? I said, because I just want to respect you and honor you, and, and I just feel arguing wasn't a good thing. And, and it worked. And he was confused for the rest of the day because he didn't understand why I wasn't mad at him. It works. The word of God. So the Proverbs are like that. They have so much It's wisdom. I mean, think about who wrote them. Solomon wrote most of them. And so, like, he had wisdom more than any man on earth. So I'm just saying you can, you can use it, all right? Just the word of God. So I look at the, the Psalms, too, that way. And I like to read. Um, I almost like... You, you go, how many have been a Christian for a long time now? You go through seasons where you read the Word of God like a lot, and all of a sudden you don't read the Word of God. Come on, let's be honest, all right? So you read the Word, I'm all excited, I can read the Word, God's speaking to me, and all of a sudden there's like this driver, like you don't even hear God's voice at all. But guess what? You still need the Word. You need that bread of life to sustain you every day, okay? I just want to encourage you. Get in the Word. Help. It'll help you in so many ways. It'll help you with your relationship with your family. It'll help you with your, um, with your secular work. It'll help you in every aspect of life. The Word of God, amen? It's like, um, it's like how many of you ever go to counseling? You ever been to counseling where you go sit in the guy's office for 45 minutes to an hour, and they tell you what to do, and then next week you go see him again? Well, this is like a counselor every day. It's like free counseling. Come on, smile at me. You know it's good, right? It's free, free counseling. So read the word. Get in the word. 2016 is coming. I'm going to preach on that in a little bit. I'm thinking, you know, we, we, need, we need to be people of the word. Right? So what's going to happen? Anyway, I won't get into that now. All right. Back to God, Jesus as our good shepherd. Everybody knows the 23rd Psalm. Let's turn and look at it. The first verse says, the Lord is my shepherd, right? The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord, everybody say that. The Lord is my shepherd. So we know we are sheep, 
And we need a shepherd, because otherwise we can't feed ourselves. So it's the same stuff. Now, in my version, the Bible says, I shall not want, right? Everybody knows that. But in other versions, it says, I will not need anything. Everything will be provided for me. Whatever I need, God has for me. Now, just think about that. We read, I shall not want. But really what it's saying is that no matter what you need, God's going to give it to you. He's going to have it for you. Amen. How many need peace this morning? My life's so crazy, right? How many just need to be loved this morning? Man, I just need to know that God loves me. Amen. How many need financial, like, I need some help financially, right? God's concerned about that too, right? God knows everything about us, and he'll provide whatever you need. I need an A on my exam this next week. You guys got exams coming up, right? Coming up, finals coming, the end of semester's coming soon. Pray for our college students, amen? God, recall, help them recall everything that they learned. That's what the Word of God says. So I've, I've prayed it over you guys. Yeah, everything that you learn, you'll recall so you can get an A on the test. Or now it's not just an A, you got to get an A plus, right? It's like you got to have a four point whatever because you got to have the best job. Um, I don't know what that's like. I think I won 4 0 in my whole life. I think it was kindergarten. But anyway, you know, yeah, finger painting or something like that. Something real simple. You know, but it's fine. God, God knows what you need, and He'll provide for you everything. Look at, look that up. If you have time this week, take this twenty-third Psalm. Go to uh, Blue um, BlueLetterBible.org. It's not com, because it's org. And look it up, and just go down each word. Take a minute. Just do the first verse. It'll blow your mind away because it tells you there's nothing that you will ever have need of if you will follow the shepherd. Come on. It, you, it's like, it's not a selfish thing. It's not like, God, I need this for myself. It's not about that. It says, as you follow Jesus, he will provide everything that you need. And a lot of times, let me, let me, let me share this. A lot of times, it's not what you, I need that happens anymore. It's like, okay, God, do I really, it's like your wants and your desire change a little bit. It's like, I don't really need this big fancy whatever or this big bank account or I don't need all this. All I need is peace from you, God, knowing that you are with me every day of the week. He says, I'll provide all whatever you can think of. I, I pray for new hair to grow. It hasn't happened yet, but I just, I, whatever you need, God will provide for you. Come on, what do you need this morning? Let's do that for a second. I like what you said. Thank you. I love the pop, what do you call it? Pop, popcorn? Popcorn praise. I love that. You know what it reminds me of? You remember the little toy that the kids had and with the little balls in it, with the little thing that rolled and it pop, 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 and you would just, but that would be to praise instead. So what do you need this morning? I love this kind of stuff. Like, I need, what? What do you need? Whatever it is. Huh? Whatever you need. Say again? My stomach to calm down. Your stomach to calm down. Father, I need healing this morning. Amen? Right? Because he said he'll provide that. He is the good shepherd. He will provide everything that you need. Amen? And I need healing. What else do you need? Energy. Energy. Justice. Justice. Mm -hmm. For justice. For Jason and Randy. Sorry. And peace for Cindy. Hallelujah. What else do you need? Peace. 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 Amen. Yeah. You know what else? Come on. This is, I love this church family center. Sure. We can do this. What else do you need? Strength. Sure. Strength. Sure. How, how many need, like, I need more belief? Right. So, I, so I, I just knew that was, I just said that. Why? Because I have unbelief about who really Jesus is. I really want to believe him. I need that. I want to believe that he is, this is what the key, key, I need to believe that he is the son of God and everything that he said is true. I am the good shepherd. He's perfect. He's pure. He's holy. He is the I am. He is everything. I need to follow you, Jesus. That's my good prayer. I Lord, I want to follow you, but I'm, I'm having trouble with my belief. Remember, the disciple said, Lord, help my unbelief, right? It's a good prayer to pray. Lord, help my, I want to follow you, Jesus. I want to know that when I ask you to forgive me of my sins, it's gone. And the only person that brings it up is the enemy of God. The devil brings it up. 
No, don't believe that. Don't follow that good shepherd. I know, you know, he looks like he's really good, but he's, you know, look, he's just a human person. He's born a virgin, Mary thing, you know, he's just a regular person. No, he is the Son of God. And he said that I died and resurrected so I could give you life. I'm going to follow this good shepherd. And what's interesting is like that video, it says the people, the sheep, know my voice. So maybe that would be our other prayer. Lord, help me to know and hear your voice so I can follow you, right? Amen? Let's go a little bit further. He said, he makes me to lie down in green path. Who said, who said peace here? What does that mean? He takes, he makes me lie down in green path. I mean, right there, everything that a sheep needs is in the pasture, right? In green pastures, fresh, it's comforting. It's a place of uh, that is provided for their hunger and a place that is probably a place of protection because a shepherd not only, and we'll see in just a second, he also protects the sheep and looks over the sheep. Amen? He leads me beside the pastures so I can eat what my fill. I can have whatever I need, amen? And then he says, he, he leads me besides the quiet waters. What does is, what is your version say, quiet, besides still waters, right? Still waters, slow waters, restful waters, a place where she, I mean, she need to be eat, drink water, but they won't drink water in a running brook that's really too fast, so it needs to be slowed down. So I heard a story a long time ago that the shepherds would actually take rocks and make a pool so the water would slow down so the sheep could actually drink because they won't drink from them. Fast, they get scared too easily. Amen? They, they, so it, the, the Lord will provide that. How many needs to slow down a little bit? You need life just kind of, it's moving too fast. Right? Lord, can I just get off the bus for a minute? Can I get off this thing, this whirlwind? Can I just take a step out and just go, all right, there's, li there's life. But I'm just over here. I'm just going to lay down in the, in the green pastures. I'm going to sit down and, and I'm going to relax a little bit, get my little cuddle blanket and and sit down and just be with Jesus. That's what he wants for you. I can't slow down when I think about all the stuff that life has, to, it has for me. All the trials and tribulations, the, all, the, all the junk that the world has. But you are sheep to God. You are precious sheep. And he loves you. And, you know something, and when you break your ankle or Achilles or whatever happened, you know what he does to a sheep like that? The shepherd will actually carry you. That sheep. Put it around his neck. Carry the little lamb to the next pastor. Make sure they're comforted. Make sure they're by their mommy. Right? Yeah, that's the shepherd. He's the good shepherd. He cares about you. And he wants you to have all those wonderful things. I like the next part. It says, He guides me in the path of, everybody say it. What is the path of righteousness? Anybody, what does righteousness mean? This is good. These words mean something. You know it's in translated in English from Hebrew, but still it has a significant meaning. Righteousness means a right relationship with God. Jesus is going to guide you in the path that you're going to have a right relationship with Father God. Right? Isn't that what Jesus came for? He came to restore us to a right place like Adam and Eve when they fell, they left the garden. But God, through, through Jesus, is going to provide for us rec a reconciliation with our Heavenly Father. So sin won't rule and reign over our lives anymore. We will forgive him because he paid the penalty for that sin. Anybody heard this before? It's true, right? So we have this right relationship. So he guides us in the path. A path. So he's going to light, like I said earlier, right? He's going to light, he's going to illuminate a path to what is a, a right relationship with God. He's going to guide you through the whatever is in that is in that path. The path is to be. I know I, from reading the Word. I know the path is straight and the path is narrow. The path is humbling and submissive. The path is like I need a Savior, and He provides that for you. And then when you uh, say yes to following Him, and you believe that He is the Son of God then your sins are forgiven, and then you are on that right path to walk this out every day. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. He'll guide you through that. He'll illuminate the, the bumps and the, 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 whole, the, pit, the pitfalls. He'll, he'll guide that to you. He does it because of his namesake, it says here, because he is providing the path. He's a good shepherd. 
He's going to provide that for you because for his name's sake. He says, if you lift up Jesus on the earth, what happens? If we lift him up on the earth, if we lift Jesus up higher on the earth, then it, it would draw what? Men to himself. Right? So in this place, we would talk about Jesus this whole month because we want to lift Jesus up because during this season, we believe there's a good time for people to come to Jesus. Right? We're arguing about should we have Christ and Christmas and all the decorations? Should I have a tree or not have a tree? Should we have the manger scene back there? Actually, we didn't put it up this morning. We have a little, we had to worry about the piano thing. But we got a little manger scene we're going to put up this year instead of the Christmas tree. Okay? That's because I love Jesus. I want you to love Jesus more than all the other stuff. Is there anything wrong with a Christmas tree? Shake your head, no, there's nothing wrong with a Christmas tree. You do whatever you want to do. I just want to, I want you to be focused on Jesus. Amen? Jesus. Um, you can battle in the store if they say Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays. I won't even get into that battle. You love the clerk. You love the waitress. You love those people. And when they see your love for them, they'll say, wow. You know, maybe you'll leave a $100 tip instead of a $5 tip for, for somebody. Right? That blows their minds. I love doing that. It's kind of fun. And they don't know what to say. I don't, don't say anything. Just, God bless you. That's all I tell them. I remember last time we did that was um, a grandmother, and she's working at a place, and anyway, she was telling, asked her before we prayed for our meal, is there anything we can pray for you for? Oh, I'll pray for my daughter. She's having another baby, blah, blah, blah. She tells us a story. So I prayed with her for the meal. Do you ever do that in a restaurant? It blows, everybody's listening around you. Right? Anyway. But he'll guide you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. You'll be lifted up in the earth. Amen? Even though, now listen, this is kind of one of my favorite verses, too, in the Bible. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Even though I walk through a lot of junk, I will say the C-R-P word, but, but not the other. Uh, even though you walk through junk, so I'm going to give you an example of, I was a, I was a, when I was growing up, I was, uh, this is funny, I'm going to laugh hard before I tell it. So, um, so when I was a little boy, I went to my aunt's farm, and on my aunt's farm we had cows. And in the field, uh, the cows leave um, things behind, right? Cow yeah. Patty. Cow patty. We have cow patty throwing contests in Wisconsin, so I guess I can say that. So we, me and my cousin would go and grab the cow patties, they are pretty big, and it would, climb up on top of this trailer, and then we throw them. And we get cow stuff every, well, not over us, but just, you know, it was kind of interesting um, that it kind of went everywhere. And, and so, so in life, you can step in cow patties, right? And you get a lot of stuff all over in your life, right? God will make your path straight so you won't step in the cow patties, right? Even though I go through the valley and the shadow, that no matter what I go through in life, Know what problems, if you even if I, I even think this if I, um, when I read this, if I even if I'm on my deathbed, I think I would just love Jesus. There's nothing the world can do to me or the enemy can throw at me that Jesus' love won't change that in my heart. It's there. He loves us so much. He's a good shepherd. He wants to love you and he'll love you through every battle and every situation. Amen? He's there for you. I don't care what you go through. Sometimes Christians, we get a little, you know, oh, does God really with me? How come, how come in Chennai there's flooding and all these people? Why did the shooting happen? Is, is, and the newspaper said this week, or was it the New York Times or whatever, is God, God is not answering prayers or some mockery that did. I feel sorry for them to mock God like that. That just really, just really disturbs my heart. Uh, but God is there. Men cause bad things to happen because of sin, not... God doesn't cause us to happen, but God will pick up all the pieces. Amen. Amen. He's always there no matter what we go through. Amen. No That's matter right. what loss we have, no matter, you know, whatever you're going through today, God is there for you. Amen. Trust Him because He is the Son of God. So we have to remind yourself, oh man, this looks horrible. I've been praying for seven months, eight months, a year, two years, still going through the same problem. God has not left you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's what the Word has to be said. In his word. He's there. He's walking through. I tell people when you're walking, this is interesting. Um, and you've probably heard me say this before. Look at it, says the fourth or fifth word there. It says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So we have to walk through our problems. 
There's a, there's a hope on the other side. There's a celebration on the other side. God's going to help you through every situation. Amen? I didn't have a job. Now I have a job. Praise the Lord. But I looked despair. I tried to put up my job application. I did all these interviews. I did all this stuff. It just, I, what's going to happen? I don't know. I don't know. All of a sudden, boom, I get a phone call. I get two phone calls. You had two, right? Or three, two or three phone calls. Boom, I got three phone calls. He didn't have anything. And all of a sudden, so what does what is Chris do? Chris says, praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, right? And faith gets, um, wells up in his spirit, and faith goes over his whole family. And now we're like, we trust in Jesus because he did this for us. Amen? How do you get to know Chris and his wife, get to know their, their story, and you'll see God is doing something miraculously there. Every one of us have a story, but God has taken us through if we just follow the good shepherd and listen to his voice. He'll take us through. Listen to his voice. He says, my sheep hear my voice. Jewish people and Gentiles, all of us together hear his voice. Okay, so we walk through the battle shadow. I will fear no evil. And this thing, fear, if you study, I was like, I will fear no evil. Because I hear the voice of God. Even though the enemy is coming after me and I think it's all evil around me, I'm not going to fear because I hear his voice. I know him. He's going to take me through this situation. I will fear no evil. Fear is not from God. Say it with me. Fear, fear is not, not from God. God. If you have fear on you, I don't care if you're at your home by yourself and you fear coming over you, you hear knocking on a wall or a door and something happens, you say, fear go. that's not from God. That's the enemy. And when you're, at, you're driving and you fear comes over you, that's not from God. And when you're at work, something happens and fear comes over you, it's not from God. You just say simply, you can rebuke that. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen, yes. Fear, you have to leave in Jesus' name. That's right. Or whatever it is, you can call it out. Whatever it is, just say, in the name of Jesus, you have to leave. I don't accept fear. Seriously, this is this is spiritual warfare. So we're going through the valley of shadow. Man. Fear comes on us because of the situation. We get a bad report from the doctor. Uh, lost my job. What, what You name it. Happens, and then fear comes on us instantly. Because the enemy is going to go, oh, God wasn't telling me the truth. He wasn't really guiding me through the shadow. He wasn't lighting their path. He's not the bread of he, they, The enemy always questions the word of God. Right here in your head. Come on. If you've been in church for a long time, this is, this is the battle. In my head, I have to battle. Am I really going to continue to trust God? Because I've been doing this for so long. And I've still got the same problem. But I still have to believe. That's what faith is. I pray today. We pray for tonight. I believe that the rain will stop in tonight. We're supposed to get rain tonight for the next 48 hours. We're supposed to get another low pressure system is, is um, in the, whatever that bay is next to the, the, uh, the coast there. So that's going to come and dump more rain in an area. Well, I believe when we pray, God can dry up the low pressure system. Right? Okay, I have to believe that. I can't doubt that. I have to believe. We all believe together. Okay, God do that. So when we hear the reports tomorrow afternoon that they didn't rain, Woo, and the water went down. I'm giving God praise. Amen. God is with me. I gotta hear his voice. I will fear no evil. Look at what it says next. For you are with me. David wrote this. God will never leave you, man. I don't. For your rod and your staff. They comfort me. Now, I learned a little bit about this rod and staff stuff. You know, every shepherd's staff, they have that staff. It's not for an, it's a, not an offensive weapon. It's more of a comforting weapon, a comforting stick. The sheep see it. Uh, when they're walking down the path, that the shepherd will actually reach out and touch the sheep so they know that he's near, right? It's kind of what that's for. They'll, he can rescue a sheep that falls into a hole. They'll use that little thing to grab her around their neck. They're pretty, uh, pretty uh, resilient. They can pull up sheep by the neck uh, using that staff. But the rod is the one I like because I'm like a military-minded guy, right? The rod is a piece of stick with a ball on the end. It's, it's, uh, it's a weight. It's weighted. So the rod, you like this, actually. The rod is actually to like hit the wolves when it comes. It's like an offensive weapon or, or something's coming after. They'll take that rod and they'll, 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 they're so skilled at it that they can hit that wolf right in the, in the head and they'll, 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 they'll kill it or they'll, they'll run away. Amen. It's an offensive weapon. God has that. He knows the enemy that's around you. He's going to take care of them for you. Amen. We just sat right in the head. I'm telling you. Right? You're like, I don't know you like that. It's an offensive weapon. The, the, the shepherds carry that to protect the sheep. 
Remember David was in the field, he was singing and taking care of the sheep. He took care, he killed a lion and a bear. I don't know if, it, well it says with his bare hands, so I don't know if he threw that at the bear and then <coughs> cut him with a knife. I don't know what he did, but you know, we can reenact that if you want to, but I'm not really good at acting. But he, no, it's the point is that he will protect you. He'll protect you with his rod and staff, as long as you what? Are listening to his voice. Right? And there's a, there's a condition to everything. If I believe God's going to forgive me of my sins, I have to believe first. And if I believe, that means I have to adapt and adhere my life to Jesus, so it looks like I'm actually believing in Jesus. Right? It's not just a thing, something I say from my mouth. It's I have to actually live that way. And how many heard that before? He, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord if what? If I follow after the good shepherd, if I listen to him. Amen. There's conditions. All these things are wonderful. I like, we read this like I read this, and sometimes they want me to read this at a funeral. So I'll read this. It brings comfort. That's great. It can bring comfort if you don't use some spiritual Q-tips. Let me describe that. I haven't done this in a long time, but I thought maybe today I would. Uh, the shepherd also has to take care of the sheep. If the sheep falls down and, and gets a uh, scratch or, or, or wound, the shepherd is there immediately to, to heal that or put some, some, uh, some salve on that to protect the wound. That's what the shepherd does. So he takes care of the sheep. But also the shepherd kind of has to take care of the discipline of the sheep and shear the sheep. Can we talk about that for a minute? Let me show you something. I got when I first became a pastor here. So, <laughs> I probably had the wrong attitude back then. I have a different attitude now. So, so I bought these at, anybody know what these are? Like, they're pretty old fashioned. So Tina and I were at a conference, uh, as a pastor conference, we were going through some training when we first came here. Uh, Dr. Wayne Lee was teaching uh, church model that was pretty pretty amazing, and so we were learning of him, we're learning of that stuff. Anyway, and so at the, the, it was in Green Lake, Wisconsin, and on the way to Green Lake, there's a little town, and they had an antique store. So let's go in the antique store and look around. So we had some time, and I found these. And so being a new pastor, I thought, well, I need to have sheep shears so I could shear the sheep. My attitude was then that um, you know I'm going to take care of business. Right? I want to take care of some stuff and make sure the sheep are all in line. Right, That was my attitude then. So after 10 years of being a pastor, it's a little bit different now. Because when you learn how they actually shear sheep, it's a gentle process. And they actually uh, will cut the sheep uh, from underneath, from the belly back. And they'll have one big fleece after they're done. So it's a time-consuming thing. If you use this, I mean, it's had to be really sharp. This one's not sharp. I can sharpen it though. You don't want to hurt the sheep. You don't want to go to barber and take pull the hair, right? You're going to cut. But anyway, so I, I, was, I was thinking that this is a, this is kind of a, I mean, if they don't get their, their fleece cut off, they're going to get so big that they'll just, they'll fall in the water and drown and die. I mean, it's, they have to be sheared, right? They have to be taken care of. And so I want to take care of you today, if you don't mind I me mean, going here. And I want you to uh, examine yourself, but I want you to pretend you have a spiritual Q-tip. Anybody use Q-tip? Right. I don't know if that's a brand name, so I don't know if I should use that, but anyway. Cotton swab. Cotton swab, thank you, Gates. <laughs> Just cotton swab, clean out the ear, clean out the ear. So I can, and they throw them in a trash can because they look all nasty. But um, why is that so important? Because Jesus said in John 10 that my sheep, that I'm the good shepherd. He's proclaiming who he was. I'm perfect. I'm everything you need. I'll provide all, 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 the, all, the, all the, everything, all the hope, all the forgiveness, all the love, everything that you need. I'm the good shepherd. But my sheep hear my voice. Learning, I know that we're the sheep. I'm the sheep. We're all sheep. And we 
me to hear the voice of God. But what hinders us from hearing the voice of God? The Lord gave me two things this morning. What hinders us? What hinders you from hearing the voice of God? I think these two things are really important. What causes us to, as believers, to not hear the voice of God? We know that the Holy Spirit comes and convicts the unbeliever of sin and draws them to Jesus, correct? And we as believers, we say, I, there's one day we all said this, I, yes, I'm a follower of Jesus, I believe Jesus, I accept Jesus, I'm going to follow Jesus for the rest of my life. And then we kind of get off track a little bit. We've got some earwax. We're not listening to the voice of God, right? There's two things, I believe, that the Holy Spirit told me this morning that hinders us from following Jesus fully or at least get the earwax in our head. One of it is pride and selfishness. I can do it myself. Or now that I've made a mistake, I can handle myself. And both of them are wrong. And what happens when we start doing our own thing, we build up earwax. And the voice of God gets duller and duller and duller. And then we feel so guilty that we just don't even show up at church anymore. Right? We feel so, we're so weighted down with the guilt and the things that we did. It's, and it's, this is amazing because we cannot, as sheep, a sheep is not created to be a burden-bearing uh, animal. They can't, you can't put a backpack on a sheep and take it up the mountains and go hiking or whatever. You, gotta, you need a, a donkey or a, or a horse or some, a cow or something. A sheep can't do that. So we cannot carry this burden of guilt and selfishness with us. It, what it does to us, it, it, it diminishes our, our life. It, it causes us to be so guilt-ridden that we just don't even want to even get close to God because now we feel we're so guilty. Come on, look at me and smile, okay? Because you guys are like looking really serious now. Because I know you know it's true, right? See, I need to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. I need to know Him. You need to hear my voice. And Andy, we lead the church. I mean, we're, we're we really believe God's taking us to a new place and helping us grow. I really I'm really excited about what God's doing here. Um, but you need to hear God's voice over my voice, right? You need to know Him and hear Him, and as we lead the church and help you grow and mature in your relationship with God, then the guilt kind of just washes away. The selfishness, oh, I'm just, what happened? What's the opposite of selfishness? Selfless. Selfless, oh, you guys are so, so smart. What else? Huh? What else? So, if I'm selfish, the opposite to me of selfish is, is humility. Amen? I'm going to humble myself before God and let him take care of all that junk that I have to be carrying around. I'm going to let him take his spiritual uh, Q-tip, if you will, and clean out my hearing so I can hear the voice of God. Because you know who helps us do that? Who helps us clean that out a little bit? It's the Holy Spirit. Right? When I said, I feel, when I said about sin and guilt and all that stuff, a lot, you guys all, all your faces just changed immediately. Like, oh, that's me, right? You're like, yeah, I'm carrying this, I'm carrying that. That's what I want to address this morning. Alright? That's what I want to take you to this morning. I don't want you to leave here today going, oh man, Pastor Bob's so messed up. He's going to No, I want you to listen. And God wants to get rid of the guilt in your life right now and the selfishness and the hopelessness. And all the stuff that you have allowed yourself to do, he wants to replace that with his love and his peace and his grace and his hope. I mean, we, what's the hope in knowing that we're going through a problem? On the other side, we have victory over this problem. Amen? If I'm going through sin in my life, I know I can be for, totally for, forgiven of my sin because of what Jesus did for me. I'm going to follow the voice of the Good Shepherd. He's going to lead me to the path of righteousness and restore me to a relationship with my Father that loves me so much and hurts when I'm in the wrong place. Amen? Today, we're going to talk about, we're going to finish with you releasing the guilt once and for all. For you releasing the, the sin once and for all. 
for you releasing the hopelessness that's in your life once and for all. You're a child of God. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you this morning. And he's saying, listen, come. Come draw closer to me. Some of us, are, hey, we read our Bible one day, we're good, we're, we're doing all good things, you know. I mean, that's, I'm happy for you. And I want you to continue walking that. A lot of us just struggle from day to day trying to do this thing. That's what we were trying to share. Like, like, Jesus is not just a Sunday morning event. Jesus is like every aspect, every part of our life, every morning, every night, every afternoon. He's there, and he wants to be part of your life. Amen? And whatever hinders you from getting close to him, this is maybe a time you just confess that to him and ask him to forgive you. Amen? This is that time. And then what we're going to do is we have a communion. Now, Andy, would you come and grab those things for me and bring them up here? We are going to have communion today. And, uh, yeah, we are, we're going to have communion today. And before we take communion, the Bible says, I need to warn you. Alright? I need to warn you. Because if you take this communion unworthy, it says you become sick. Isn't that? Yeah, isn't that what the word God says? Right? So what is it? What is it? What's saying? Well, we need to ask the Lord before we take the, these are just emblems. This is a bread, and this is a, some grape juice, and the bread represents his body, and the juice represents his blood or the new covenant. And so we're going to remember what Jesus did for us, but we're also going to remember that he's coming back for us. We have a hope, we have a victory that's ahead. Right? He's coming back for us. There's gonna, this, there's gonna be a new heaven, a new earth. All this is gonna be made new again, and we're gonna, we're gonna celebrate with Jesus. It's gonna be a last supper. We're gonna have an amazing meal with Jesus. I, mean, I can't wait for that. Amen. It's gonna be exciting. But until that time, between now and whenever that's made right, and you can believe in whatever you believe in that's gonna happen next. I believe Jesus is coming back next. That's the only thing that has to happen. He's not gonna come back and die on the cross. He already did that. He's not gonna come in resurrection. He's already did that. He's not gonna send his Holy Spirit. He already did that. Next thing that happens, he's coming back for us that are believers. Now, until then, we have to be following the voice of the Good Shepherd. All the time. Anything less will hinder our relationship with God. And he wants you and me to be righteous and holy and light to the world and all sorts of wonderful things. I just want to talk about you right here, right here, right now. This. Where is this right now? Oh, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that when I asked him to forgive me, he forgave me of all my sins. His blood cleansed me from the top of my head all the way down to my feet. I made him. John tells us that I'm born again. My old life is gone. I'm now a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away and I become new in him. Oh Lord, please forgive me. Help me to hear that voice, the good shepherd's voice. <coughs> so let's do that. Just close your eyes where you're at. I'm not going to have you come forward. I'm not going to have you jump up and do popcorn sins and all like that. No, right where you're at. Right where you're at. You ask God, whatever's hindering you, whatever spiritual Q-tip you need to listen, to get to remove the wax out of your ears so you can fully hear the voice of God. Maybe it's unbelief. Lord, just help me to believe. Maybe it's a sin that, oh, you would, if you tell it, people would just go be shocked. That's fine. God already knows about it. You need to confess it to him. Maybe it's just pure like the Holy Spirit showed this morning. Maybe I'm just selfish and I have a lot of pride. It's hindering me from getting close to God. Confess that to him right now. Pray where you're at. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you're done praying and you've asked God to forgive you, and even if you're good, just, I want you to stand right where you're at. So we're going to take time. Well, everybody's standing in the room. Lord, please forgive me, and whatever it is you ask me to forgive you. And I'm going to follow the voice of the Good Shepherd from this day forward. Hallelujah. Just stand where you're at when you're done praying.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for the hope we have in you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Cleanse me. Make me whole. Take away the fear. Take away the, the doubt. Take away uh, the anxiety of life, Lord. Take it away, Father. Let's go ahead and come and grab the emblems and just go back to the 